Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k. We're going to be doing a Necrons video today talking about my top units for each detachment. I might do three, I might do five, we'll see how we go. I might just do some honourable mentions as well. It's just my personal top units. Of course everybody's meta is different, everybody's local meta and local games, local opponents are different. I come up quite often against Chaos Demons. So maybe my picks have been tailored to that, I'm not sure. I don't have the luxury of playing every single faction quite frequently. But we're going to get into the, to this today, in fact we're going to go with the top units for each detachment. So we're going to kick this right off with the Hypercrypt Legion. And this isn't in any particular order, these are just my top picks. The first pick I'm going to go with is the Monolith. Now the Monolith has got a lot of different uses within this detachment. Of course, there's a lot of stratagems involved. You've got the Dimensional Corridor to basically charge from the Eternity Gate. You've got the Hyperphasic Recoil, so if you lose a single model, you can basically zap it across the battlefield back at where the Monolith is stationed, which could do a lot of things really. You can get you onto objectives, get you out of dodge, or just general movement, I suppose. You've got the Quantum Deflection for the 4 plus invulnerable save because it will get targeted. Cosmic Precision also works quite nicely with the 3 inch Deep Strike because the Monolith is quite a chunky model, getting it to Deep Strike naturally is quite difficult, 9 inch bubble around it, but the 3 inch, not too bad. Did the voice crack just then? Did the 3 inch, that's better. And then the, you've got the Entropic Damping as well with the hazardous stuff when it's getting targeted. I don't use that one that often to be honest, but I do know the potentials of it. It does have Deep Strike as we mentioned and it can hyperphase if you find a nice gap because of course it happens at the end of your opponent's turn. So if you see a gap, maybe it is a 9 inch gap to fit the monolith in, take it. The next ones in the Hypercrypt Legion is the Catan Charles. I've just kind of grouped the Catan Charles as a whole here. You could say the Nightbringer, you could say the Void Dragon, it all depends on what you prefer. Maybe the Transcendent, even the Deceiver, who knows, right? But you can hyperphase these guys in again using the Cosmic Precision Stratagem for 1 CP. 3 inch deep strike or 3 inches away from enemy models. They don't need Deep Strike, it basically Deep Strikes them for them, which is the coolest part of this stratagem. Now they won't be able to charge, but most of them have really good ranged weapons. You've got the Gaze of Death from the Nightbringer for example, it's good enough. And if anyone dares to get into melee with it, even better for us, right? Now you could just use, use it like Table Edges from Strategic Reserves, if you're hyperphasing them in without the Cosmic Precision stratagem, you could do that just fine. I mean, these guys work in pretty much any detachment. They're almost, if not, they are auto-includes. The price didn't go up. They are fantastic. Next, I wanted to mention the Death Marks. Death Marks are very good because they've got Deep Strike. So when you're hyperphasing them in, you can use the Deep Strike ability each and every turn at the hyperphase, which is brilliant, especially for your scoring. But they're 65 points for five. That's dirt cheap for Deep Strike. I mean, you couldn't be doing investigate signals, you've got behind enemy lines, deploy teleport homer, engage on all fronts, cleanse, just to name a few that you can get done with the death marks. They've got precision with their weapons so they can take out leaders within units, which is just a bonus, really. I don't really use them for their snipers, it's more about the scoring capabilities, but it's an added bonus that they've got to have those sniper rifles or the synaptic in, in whatever they're called. I always forget the name of them. But yeah, reusing that deep strike ability every single bat around, I think, is the key reason and 65 points. Cheap. Next, for a very similar reason, is the Hex Mark Destroyers. Now, they are 70 points, so they are 5 points more than the Death Marks. So it's they're going to be doing the same sort of things. Deploy telepohomers, investigate signals, behind enemy lines and all that jazz. They lose precision with the weapon, or he loses precision with the weapons. It did have it in the previous, was it the previous? Before the codex came, it, it had precision. Now it just ignores cover, not as good. The footprint of a Hexmark Destroyer is much better than five death marks. I know the base is bigger, but it is one single base at the end of the day. You can stick it in the corner. Whereas five death marks is slightly bigger, not by much, but the main part of this is the fact that the Hexmark Destroyer has low and operative, which means it can't be targeted at range unless the unit's within 12 inches. If the unit's within 12 inches, they're likely to be able to charge as well. So you're not likely to put the hex mark in that sort of position unless you want to throw him away for scoring those secondaries. So he's very survivable. If you've got terrain in the way as well, that makes it even better. Again, you're going to be reusing that deep strike ability that he also has. 
every single battle round. Then I wanted to talk about the Knoptic Wraiths. They're going to be working in all the detachments. You're going to see these quite a few times in this video. Probably the best Necron unit in my opinion. You add a Technomancer to the unit and of course they're going to have the 5 plus 4 no pain save. You add the Osteoclave Fulcrum with the Technomancer to give them the deep strike ability. So again, like the Death Marks, like the Hex Mark, you can be entering the battlefield via the hyperphase, hyperspace, and you're going to be using death, uh, deep strike, which is good. They're super durable. The 4 plus in one save, we already mentioned the 5 plus 4 in a pain save. Their toughness is 6. They've got an extra wound now because they're 4 wounds apiece. They are very, very durable. The Technomancer can heal them as well in the movement phase. Get them onto an enemy objective, and what I like to do is try to capture enemy outposts because they've got a 10 inch movement as well. If you can capture enemy outposts by their movement or by their deep strike enhancement, your opponent's going to really struggle to shift them, and it might take them the entire turn and everything they've got to do so. So that's the five selections I've got for the Hypercrypt Legion in no particular order. Worthy mentions for Necron Warriors I like to hyperphase the Necron Warriors in because they just get in the way and it restricts movement for your opponent. I also want to throw in here the Shrine Praetorians. They've got Deep Strike, they can shoot, they can fight. Not as good as other units, but I think worthy mentions. Next we've got the Obeisance Phalanx, which is the sort of Overlord, Lich Guard, Triarch kind of detachment where you get the plus one to the wound roll for a selected unit in a battle round. The first selection I'm going to go with for this detachment, in my opinion, is the Silent King, the big man himself. Now he doesn't directly benefit from the detachment rule because he doesn't have the necessary keywords. No Overlord, no Lich Guard, no Triarch Praetorian or Triarch, whatever it is. He doesn't have any of them, unfortunately. However, he's going to amplify the units around him that do with his Triacal abilities. One of them is the re-rolls of ones to hit and to wound for nearby units, which is an aura. And if you've already got the plus one to the wound roll, that could be brutal. You can also use the enhancement, not the enhancement, the stratagem, which is the nano assembly protocols for a minus one to all damage taken. So minus one to all damage taken when you've got a, a lot of wounds with this unit. Five wounds apiece from the trichrome maneers on the sides as well. You can reanimate them on top. The annihilator beams coming out of the maneers are pretty powerful with damage six. He does everything. He can fight, he can shoot, he can buff, and yeah, he is a big presence in your games. He is a little bit expensive, but I think is worth it. I think he's worth it. Next I want to talk about the Overlord, more specifically probably the tr the Translocation Shroud Overlord which is the new version. I don't think there's a reason to take the standard Overlord anymore to be honest with you. But he's of course got the keyword, he's got the Overlord keyword which means he can use that plus one to the wound roll for a targeted unit and that'll be applied to his unit. So if he's going with Lich Guard, Immortals or Warriors, the entire unit will get the plus one. Now what you could do is take the Enhancement Eternal Conqueror, which will give the re-rolls to all the hit rolls. So if you've got, say for example, this Overlord with a group of Immortals, you're re-rolling all your hit rolls. You're then potentially re-rolling all the wound rolls with a plus one to wound as well, because Immortals re-roll wound rolls. Maybe it's ones, maybe it's all the wound rolls, depending on if your opponent's on an objective. So there's a lot of re-rolls there. If they've got the Tesla Carbines, they can advance and still fire. And if you're advanced with the Translocation Shroud Overlord, you're going to auto advance 6. You're doing your movement and advancing through models and terrain. It's a nice bit of synergy. I like it. Speaking of Immortals, that is my next pick, in fact, the Necron Immortals. You will need the Overlord, as we mentioned, otherwise you're not going to get the plus 1 to the, the wound roll, which makes them pointless if you don't. So you may as well take the Overlord. As we already said, they re-rolled the wound rolls naturally. You don't need to have any buffs in there. You don't need to have any stratagems in there. Enhancements. They just do it. That's their rule. And I think the Tesla Carbine is the best options for them. Because you can move, advance, and then still fire. And if you add a Chronomancer in there, even better. Because then you can move again after, after shooting. Speaking of the Chronomancer, that is the next pick I've gone with here. And there's a there's a main with well, a few reasons. First of all, that it gives the unit a minus one to hit for your opponents to, sh to fire at them. Second of all, you're moving after firing, as we've just mentioned. But third of all, there is a stratagem, which is for five plus critical hit rolls. Which it, okay, you don't really need to apply this to the chronomancer, I suppose. But the five plus critical hit rolls is normally what you would gain from the plasmancer. But if you're putting this stratagem on the unit and you've got a chronomancer in there. 
you're sort of gaining the buffs that a Plasmancer would provide, but you're gaining the buffs that the Chronomancer provides. So it's kind of getting two for the price of one for just the CP. It's also a method of getting a second enhancement in the unit as well if you take a Chronomancer. So I like having a Chronomancer in that unit that we've spoke about already. Overlord with the Translocation Shroud, Immortals with the Tesla Carbides and the Chronomancer. It just gives them a lot of stuff to do. Lastly, I want to mention the Lich Guard. Lich Guard, I know I've been pooing them off this edition because of Wraith's taking their spot, but in the Evasence Phalanx, the Lich Guard are still king, I think, anyway, because they've got the Lich Guard keyword. That means it's going to apply to the detachment rule. They've got the right keyword. So, yeah, they're durable with their shields. They've got the 4 plus in runnable save if you take the shields, which is probably what you take. It just gives them a bit of survivability. Without the shields, not so much. You've got the Sentinels of Eternity Stratagem, which is a five. Uh, it's a four plus fight on death ability. You've got the Suffer No Rival Stratagem, which gives them precision, which is I think that's really good. Some people don't really care for precision. I like precision. Territorial Obsession, which is where you can add one OC to every model in the unit. So they start at two OC. You can put it to three OC per model. You've got a ten of them in the unit. If you took ten, that's thirty OC. You don't need thirty OC, but even a five man unit, that's fifteen. It's quite a lot. They're useful with an Overlord as well because you're going to have the Noble in the unit for the minus one to wound them. That's with the Guardian's protocol ability that they've got naturally. And you give that Overlord the Warrior Noble Enhancement which will also give them a minus one to hit them as well. So it could be a minus one to hit them, minus one to wound them. Happy days. Happy days. So yeah, that's the five I've gone with with the Abasis Phalanx. Noteworthy mentions here, we've got Praetorians again, I don't seem to get them into the final the final list, but Praetorians have got the keyword, again they deep strike, which probably is quite good for your scoring in this detachment to be honest with you, maybe they should have gone in over like a Chronomancer perhaps, maybe in hindsight yeah, because you need some sort of scoring units especially further afield, and I think that's probably the only honourable mention that I've got for you. So let's move into the Awakened Dynasty or the Index Dynasty that some people like to call it. I'm going to start with Necron Warriors. Necron Warriors, you've got a plus one to the hit roll with command protocols, and there's a lot of characters that can go with Warriors. All the Cryptex, you've got loads of named characters, you've got this, all the Overlords. There's a lot of models that can go in the unit. Royal Warden as well, that's the cheaper option. You could use a Veil of Darkness Relic on them, and then you could add maybe a Plasmancer. So you're Veiling in, 5 plus critical hit rolls with those Gorse Reapers perhaps. Nice because they've got lethal hits, don't forget. That's good. Now they're much harder to kill when they've got a unit of 20 of them. That's a big heavy unit which, yes they've only got a 4 plus armor say, but you've got the protocol of eternal revenant for the, the leader, in case the leader goes down maybe from precision. You've got the protocol of undying legions which will allow you to use reanimation protocols after you've lost a model. I think if you like silver tire necrons then this is definitely the detachment for you in my opinion. Also don't forget to add the assault keyword to your warriors. You can do so by the pro by using the protocol of sunstorm. Add assault so you could therefore advance and still fire. Maybe it will get you into range with the gorse reapers or just get your 20 man brick into a better location each model with OC2. Nice. Next we've got the wraiths again. They pop their heads up yet again. Now this time with the Technomancer involved, which you always would, they're going to get a plus one to their hit rolls. So they're now hitting on threes, which is good. It's good because they standardly hit on fours. The Canoptic Court, I think, is a better option for Wraiths. But if you do like the Index Detachment, then yeah, they still work fine. They still work fine. Obviously, we need the Technomancer in there. The Protocol of Hungry Void for the plus one to Strength and AP, that's going to definitely help this kind of unit. And again, the Protocol of Eternal Revenant to keep that Technomancer up and running and the Undying Legions as well, of course, to keep your Wraiths up and running too, just for added durability. Next, I've got the Locust Heavy Destroyers in this little category here. You can make use with the plus one to the hit roll with a Locust Lord. Now, you could argue they don't need it because they've got the heavy keyword on both of the weapon options, but having a Locust Lord means a few things. First of all, you can still move and still be hitting on twos. Second of all, You've got enhancement options if you wanted a, a Veil of Darkness again for your exterminates perhaps. Third of all, you get the critical hits on a 5+, plus, similar to a Plasmancer. So if you've got the exterminators again, with loads of shots, critical hits on a 5+, plus, nice. With the Gorse Destructors, lethal hits on a 5+, plus is okay. I'm not saying it's great, you can only have three in a unit, three shots in a unit. So it's okay. 
skipping the the wound roll they are high strength anyway strength 14 you might not really need it but sometimes it does help and that's sometimes where you lose CP when you roll the dice and one of those is just a two and you go damn it I needed I needed a three or at least a one to re-roll it and you've got to spend a CP to do it so having that locust lord there does also help and he's got a resurrection orb as well so that will also help too Sticking with Locust, we're going to go with the Locust Destroyers now, the baby options. Again with the Locust Lord for the plus one to the hit roll. Five plus critical hit rolls with a lot more shots. D3 shots per model. I think it's the damage is now a flat two, isn't it? Let me just double check because I, I always get this part mixed up. Is it D3 or is it flat two? It is a flat two. I should know that really. So yeah, plenty of damage coming out of these against infantry. They are good infantry killers. Very reliable, lots of shots, 5 plus critical hits with Locust Lord, plus 1 to the hit roll for the Locust Lord. Breathe, Command Protocols of course is active. Enhancements again, Resurrection Orb again. And maybe you can make use of the Protocol of Vengeful Stars here, which is a, a nice option to have as well. The last option I'm going to go with is the Necro Immortals again. Necro Immortals, another shooter unit that can be led by a number of different characters within our Codex. Lots of different buffs, Chronomancer's given different buffs, Plasmancer's given different buffs, Technomancer's given different buffs. There's lots of different ways and synergy and combinations that you can choose. They're re-rolling wounds naturally as we mentioned earlier in this video. They pretty much work in all detachments, they're just very good Immortals and they're not too expensive. So that's the five I've gone with, not, not really got any honourable mentions for the Awakened Dynasty. Maybe you can throw in Katan, but Katan could just go in anything really, so... Let's move on to the Canoptic Court. Canoptic Court, I'm going to start with those race again. Their speed makes them massive in this, in this detachment. Because you've got 10 inches, you're going to get onto objectives to unlock your power matrix. And it's checked every phase. So you can unlock it at the end of your movement phase. Or the start of your shoot phase, whatever kind of whenever you're checking it really. And that means your power matrix is going to unlock for the rest of your army. So these can be the first units to do so, maybe they're just doing it all game, just keeping your power matrix up and running so that every Canoptic and Cryptic unit is re-rolling all the hit rolls. Beautiful. I would be taking three units of these with Technomancers in each of the units if I'm taking the Canoptic Court. I personally don't actually own that many, <laughs> that many raves at the moment, I need to get my, myself some. That's why you don't necessarily see them when I play... I mean I've not done many battle reports, but when I have done a battle report or so, I only have sort of a six man unit really, I need to get myself some more. You can give these guys infiltration with an enhancement for your Technomancer so they can be infiltrators, which is good. Get them nice and early into the power matrix and just become a bit of a, a wall. You've got to come through the race before you start messing with anything really. You can also have them, or not also, instead of having infiltrators you can have them re-rolling wound rolls of a one with another enhancement there. You've got the Sinister of Eradication for Devastating Wounds. It is 2 CP though, a bit expensive, or reaction or reactive subroutines to be able to give them extra movement when an enemy unit gets nearby. That one's kind of cool. Again, it kind of restricts your opponent's movement, especially if they've done that, that unit first. You move your wraiths a bit further forward, and all of a sudden your opponent can't actually move anything because they're all stuck behind your wraiths. So yeah, wraiths the first one. Next one's a little bit of a curveball. Um. Not a hundred percent on this one, but I wanted to throw this in this video, and I may even do a separate video on this. It's the Canoptic Acanthrites. So yeah, this this may or may not be new meta. I don't know. Probably not because it's Forge World models, and they're expensive, and people don't like paying for expensive models for you know it's, it's overpriced. That's what I should really say. Now, with the new rules commentary we've had at the end of January, start of February, they basically announced that we can stack abilities that are not auras. Now these Canoptic Acanthrites have an ability where they increase the AP for friendlies hitting the same target. So for example, if you've got three units of Acanthrites, if you've gone and paid all that money to Forge World, that would, if they were attacking a certain unit, let's say they were going up against, I don't know, a big unit of Orc Boys, and they were attacking it, all of a sudden, everything else that attacks that Orc Boy unit will give them a minus 3 AP. Now, that was a really bad example because all boys, you don't need minus 3 AP. Think of another example, come on. Just a standard Rhino. A standard Rhino, it's got no invun save, quite tough. 
you can whack on an extra minus 3 AP if you attack with all three of your Reckon Fights first, if that Rhino survives, of course. Now, this only applies to the critical wound rolls, though. It's not going to be applying to every single wound, minus 3 AP, that would be crazy. But any sixes or any critical wounds, should I say, will get the minus 3 if you've got three units attacking. Not going to be as useful for units that have got lethal hits because, of course, you skip the wound roll, so they're not going to benefit at all. They've also got infiltrators, which people do seem to forget. It's an infiltrator's unit, and they're much more reliable than flayed ones. Flayed ones go down quite quickly. These guys are toughness five with two wounds, so yeah, they're, they're a little bit more durable. Not not massively durable, but a little bit more. They've still got a decent weapon, and they can fight in melee too. So I wanted to give them a little shout out in this Canoptic Core part. Next, I'm just going to group this together, is Cryptex. Of course, Cryptex need to be involved in the Canoptic Court because then you're going to unlock all the enhancements. You're going to unlock the abilities from the Power Matrix for your Necron Warriors, your Necron Immortals, because it gives the whole unit the Cryptek keyword if they are a part of it or leading it. Don't forget, Oric and the Diviner is a Cryptek as well. Some people seem to forget about that guy nowadays. He is a Cryptek, giving that 4 plus in invulnerable save for maybe your Warriors. But yeah, enhancements. I think some of the stratagems apply to Cryptek or Canoptic units as well, so you would just need Cryptek's within this detachment. Number four, I've gone with the Canoptic Doomstalker. I like the Doomstalkers. Likely going to stay on your home objective. You're always going to be re-rolling all the hit rolls because your home objective is always within the power matrix, which is lovely. And it's also going to apply to your 5 plus Overwatch ability as well. So 5 plus Overwatch, you've got D6. I can't remember the amount of attacks. Is it D6 plus 1 or D6? Whatever it is. But you're re-rolling it all looking for fives, which is good. You could use the subroutine stratagem to move away from enemy units that get close because it's a canoptic unit. That will make their charge move very difficult, if not impossible, maybe. And that won't affect your heavy keyword as well because it's not your shooting phase. You could also give him lone operative. If you've got a single canoptic doomstalker, give it lone operative with the counter temporal shift. So it's not lone operative, but it basically is. Opponents need to get within 12 inches to target it at range. So you can actually apply both of those stratagems, in fact, which is kind of cool. You can use subroutines to get away from 12 inches, get away within, well, or further away from 12 inches, and then use that lone operative counter temporal shift to say, well, now you can't even shoot me. So <laughs> there's a few things you can do with the Doomstalker. And of course, we're going to talk about Immortals again, yet again. They are very good. You will need a Cryptek within this unit, of course, to give them the appropriate detachment rules, because they need a Cryptek keyword. We've already spoke about Cryptex earlier on in this section. Chronomancers, I think, are decent for the minus one to the hit roll against them. And then the shoot, move, shoot ability. Move, shoot, move even. Move, shoot, move, shoot, move. Yeah, move, shoot, move. That's the one. Plasmancers for the five, five plus critical hit rolls that you will be fishing for, by the way. If it's a three or a four, roll it again. Just roll it again. You're fishing for fives. Because you want critical hit rolls for your lethal hits or your sustained hits, whatever weapon you've taken. You may as well fish for them, you're re-rolling everything. They also naturally re-roll their wound rolls, as we've mentioned a few times. So that's the five selections I've gone with with the Canoptic Court. Honourable mentions here, Warriors again, for similar reasons as the Immortals with the Cryptex. They do get tagged a little bit easier because they've got a larger footprint than Immortals. So they may need a real warden to be able to fall back, I suppose. Canoptic Spiders are also pretty good, they can shoot and they can fight, although I think they're a bit of a luxury pick at the moment. But yeah. Let's move into the last detachment, which is the Annihilation Legion. The first one I've gone with, the Scorpion Destroyers, of course. Probably our best melee destroyers. In fact, I know they are. They're our best melee destroyers. This is a melee detachment, even though we've got Locust Destroyers and Hexmark Destroyers. It's mainly kitted out, in terms of the detachment rule, for melee destroyers. Now, we will talk about the Scorpion Lord in a moment, because, of course, he will be one of the other options. But you've got the Mass of Death stratagem for a minus one to hit the unit. That adds to their survivability. Pitiless Hunters for the extra piling and consolidation moves, which is important for this detachment. Movement, I think, is key. You need to be killing and killing quick and moving on and getting into another fight as quick as you can. They reroll hits on the charge, naturally, and unlock devastating wounds twice per battle with plasma sites with a, with a full unit of six destroyers. So that combined to the Scorbit Lord's ability, which we're going to go over now anyway, is good because you've got the Scorbit Lord adding lethal hits to the to the unit. Lethal hits, potentially devastating wounds. Also, the Scorpec destroyers are passing on their rerolls to their hit rolls ability to the Lord, because it's all part of the same unit, 
and the ability applies so it kind of works both ways which is cool enhancement options you've got the the fight on death ability on a four plus you've got the soulless reaper to prevent enemy units from falling back which i think is the best one you definitely take that one add an extra fight phase to give yourself a chance to clear the unit so that you've got more chance to move. You, in your movement phase you can then move eight and charge up to 12 in a new fight again you want to be getting done units done 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 I think the Scorpion Lord kind of acts like a seventh, seventh man in a pretty killer unit. Next, number three, I've gone with the Flayed Ones. The Flayed Ones have got the keyword because it doesn't just interrupt destroys, it also goes with Flayed Ones as well. I think that was because GW probably spotted that there wasn't that many that many melee destroyer units other than well, what we've spoken about so far. There's another one as well. So they've added the Flayed Ones in as well, I suppose. But... They've got the same stratagems as the Scorbit Destroyers, so you can apply those stratagems to the Flayed Ones, Mask of Death and so on. The only difference here is that they're going to be lacking a character or a leader to lead the unit, which also means no enhancements for the unit, which kind of sucks. They do have infiltrates, but to be honest, the only reason the Flayed Ones are in my list today is because we kind of lack options. Apart from going to the units that don't really apply to the detachment rule, you can go to a Doomsday Arc, you can go to a Catan and so on. But I'm trying to apply it to the rules. We've then got the Aphidian Destroyers, which is another melee option, but they're a bit more quicker. They've got the Deep Strike ability. I tend to use them to score rather than to fight. But this is the Annihilation Legion, so it's up to you, I suppose. They've got the Tunneling Horrors ability, which means you can remove them from the battlefield. A bit like Hyperphasing from the Hypercrit Legion. You can remove them from your in your opponent's turn, bring them back in with Deep Strike. Which, before the Codex, made them extremely good, in my opinion. Now that we've got the Hypercrypt Legion, it makes them less useful, but in other detachments, they're still very useful. If you've already packed in three units of six Scorbit Destroyers, then you may as well start getting your Ophidians in, especially if you want some extra punch. Maybe you are using them just to punch and hit and get into engagement range. No problem with that at all. There's a few extra attacks there. But really, I think you should be using them to score because the Annihilation Legion does struggle to score points. Lastly, I've mentioned the Locust Destroyers. They don't really interact with the detachment rule because it's all about on the charge and stuff like that. But there are a couple of stratagems that can assist the local destroyers. Again, Masters of Death for the minus one to hit them. And then you've got the Sport of Fertility, or fr Frailty even, which is a plus one to hit and potentially a plus one to wound if your opponent is at half strength. So that can assist with your shooting, I suppose. But we do lack natural options in this attachment with the actual keywords. So that's the five I've got for you for the Annihilation Legion. Honourable mentions that are not really re relevant to the detachment. Again, Catans, Death Marks, because I think you're going to lack scoring. Hex Marks as well. Immortals and Wraiths, of course, because they work everywhere. And that's why I would apply them as honourable mentions for this one. So guys, that is my top five in every single detachment from the Necrons. If I've missed any, or you play differently, let me know down in the comments below. We've all got different ways of playing and different metas, as we mentioned in the intro. But guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.